How do we get back to having houses of prayer, houses of worship? Like I said before, prayer is the foundation of our worship. If you're not praying during the week and you go off to church, what are you going to church for? What do you offer? What do you bring? Now I know, because I, hey, I'm a man. I've had my weeks and you're in the business world and you've just been battered to and fro and or you're a mom and you just had just trouble after trouble, car breaks down, kids are sick. You know, you just wore out. You hardly have any time to pray. And you go to the house of God for what? To get rich, to be lifted. And the pastor and the leadership and the worship leader all should be tuned in to what you need. But what I'm talking about is the prescribed method that we presently use to spread the message of Jesus Christ. Billy Graham does not operate in our culture anymore. Evangelism, as it once was conducted in the earlier days of our country, and even in this past century, is not done anymore. What have we replaced it with? I believe we've replaced it with business. Worship music, as wonderful as, as it is, these bands, Newsboys, Third Day, um, Reliant K, uh, all these different bands, Mercy Me, uh, Jeremy Camp, they sing great stuff. But what has happened is this has become a business run by business people. And when you want to hire these guys to come, it's literally a business transaction. I just don't see in this New Testament any example of Paul, Peter, uh, Philip, Stephen, any of these guys operating in a way as preachers, messengers, heralds of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Music is a big deal in America. It's a big deal in the world. It's a big business. And it's suffering. But you know what? Maybe it's suffering because God wants it to suffer. Maybe these Christian labels are hurting for money because God wants it to hurt for money. Because what it is doing is putting forth a false sense that this is how you promote the gospel. And I got, a, I can honestly say that when I got involved with music as a venue owner, and I got involved with, the, with these young men, women, that were involved in that industry, I was grieved and I was torn. I was struggling to figure out how do you justify paying this band $5,000 paying this band $1,000, this band $800, this band $300, this band $200. The guy that gets paid $100 could be more anointed than the guy who gets $5,000. But the guy gets $5,000 because he's got more record sales, CD sales, he's got more going on, and he has, he, he has more proven uh, track record of success in selling records or CDs or music. He gathers a bigger crowd, therefore he gets more money. Why? Because we have to charge a door. And we charged the door, we called it a donation, but we charged the door. Because we found that kids and their parents do not give to us. They did not give. We would have love offering after love offering after love offering, and they would not give. We'd get 10, 20 bucks for two bands, and then they got split 20 bucks. And we go in the cash register, we barely made any profit that night, and we give out our money from the cash register. And we did that, we just gave it all away. I had one guy come in one night, solo act, brought nobody, and got $350. We, we happened to have a great day that Saturday. We sold a lot of coffee. We happened to have $350, and guess what we did? We gave it to him. I had six or seven kids at the time, and this guy got the money. And he called it worship. Now he struggles, this guy, same guy, is also struggling. Well, am I a musician for just for the sake of being a musician to get paid for my services? I say, let it be business. Be a businessman and be a musician. Just do that. Just do the, the business of music. But don't call it worship. Don't call it house of prayer. Don't call it a gathering that's unique with the presence of God. Those people come free of charge. That doesn't mean they donations. It doesn't mean they don't get funded. It doesn't mean that God doesn't give to them through moving on the hearts of people. I believe that's what happened in the life of Paul as he traveled. People would just give to him to help him as he went from place to place. By faith, this whole ministry of spreading the gospel is a faith endeavor. You cannot take faith out of what it really is. 
Faith has to be the foundation of ministry. It has no power. No faith, no power. So if you're a musician and you want to operate in a heavenly way and you want to get a tremendous reward when the Lord comes back, operate solely by faith. And I know there's guys that do this. Praise God. They do it. But they're not the norm. They're the little guy over there that barely anybody's taken notice to. Everybody wants to go to the big guy's show, the David Crowder show, the Newsboys show. And I understand. They cost money to travel and it costs money to power up the place. It costs money for the lights. It costs money for the rental of the stadium. It costs money to hire staff. It costs money to travel. As I said, it costs money for food. But how much money do you need? And can we get donors to give and can we have a free offer at the door if it's really worship, if it's really house of prayer, if it's God inhabiting the praise of his people, if that's really what it's all about, why can't we do it for free? And so we are working on our business plan for 2010 for Living Lattes Cafe, believing by faith that God is going to get us back up there on the highway uh, presenting excellent food, excellent coffee, excellent music, excellent atmosphere publicly presented to the highway to get everybody to come and enjoy food and fellowship with us. Not because we're Christians, but because the food is good. My wife's food is excellent. Her pastries are excellent. Her brownies are unbelievable. Our, our fraps are, are on level with Starbucks or better. But don't buy from me because I'm a Christian or a Jesus guy. Buy from me because the food is good. And that will pay my bill so I can preach. That's what I've determined is the best way for me to preach and work at the same time. To be able to be in the people business, in the service business, and offer a service and do it by building relationship. Now I'm going to hire people that are going to do my accounting, which eats up time and, and creates aggra aggravation for me because I'm not good at that. I just want to be in the people business. And guess what? You need people in the cafe business that are good with people. And they want to talk to people, they want to pray with people, they want to build relationships with people. And it all drives what? The worship of God. Because if we turn profit, guess what? We can offer a fund to bands to pay them out of the Living Lattes budget. Now, if kids come and they donate to music, guess what? God's going to bless them with more music. They donate to positive entertainment. They're going to be, it's whatever you sow, you reap. You sow into this, you're going to get that. If you sow mercy, you get mercy. If you sow love, you get love. You sow bad attitude, you get bad attitude. You sow money, you get money. You sow time, you get time. All we do, 100%, is care about our family and the people around us. We preach the gospel because we got little time. We're redeeming the time because the days are evil. And so in this present economy, I believe the Lord is saying to us today, November 22nd, 2009, which marks the... Um, fourth anniversary of the day that I received a God about what I was supposed to do with the rest of my life. I did not get a prophetic word on this day. So nobody prophesied over me. Me and God had a deep encounter, a deep encounter with Jesus Christ. And Jesus, and the Father, presented to me the plan and the strategy that he had ordained for me from before time began to preach the word of God. I didn't believe it. I thought it was for my boys. But God said, no, I want you to preach the gospel, my word and only my word, to the children and those who are far off. I want you to preach faith to a faithless generation. I want you to preach of the beauty of God, the commerce of God, the glory of God, and the return of God. These are generally the things he said. And he said, business will be your supply. So I have to believe that if that word is from God, that business will be my supply. Business people, me being involved in business, doing cafe business. Business is how he's going to fund this unique next generation church planning model called Live in Lattes International Fellowship using Live in Lattes cafes, great music, great food, great coffee, great fellowship, and presenting that to the street in towns where the Holy Spirit.